Welcome along to this little video going through, very quickly actually, through the 2020.1 uh, changes to Infoworks. Uh, biggest change you'll notice is the user interface up the top here. Um, it's gone back to more of a um, ribbon type interface, um, which we did actually have in the early days of Infoworks. Not exactly the same as this though. So. To begin with, um, as you're snapping through the uh, tabs here, there does not seem to be very many commands in there. That is because in many cases, such as the create and environment, they're actually in these drop downs. They are reasonably well um, managed into groups, so that it shouldn't take too long, I don't think, to um, find the things you're looking for and get used to the new interface. Um, when you're looking for the uh, data sources, that's on the first one here, but that over the side and things like the style palette, etc., um, they all um, function exactly the same way. Um, as I say, some of the other things in the drop down here are additional to what's shown in the, um, in the actual tab itself, uh, but that should be not too hard to get rid of, I don't think get used to. Um, here is your presentation of the uh, storyboard creator etc. Um, you've got the options for writing out file types and things as well. One of the things that I found difficult to find, if you want to get back to the home um, or, uh, page, it's actually just click on the eye now and that will take you back to the uh, home panel. And um, things like the proposals, they're actually here under this drop down um, for all the proposals as per normal and when you're looking for your engineering view that's next to the proposals here so that's a little bit different um, as well application options all as per normal uh, just a different location for them um, other things, uh, the bookmarks are here, um, when you're looking for your utilities, most of those are fairly similar to what was in the utilities page before, uh, a few extra ones, performance check and frame rate, um, a few extra things added in there, here's all your measure commands, they're all just in this permanent little ribbon, all your selection commands also in that permanent ribbon, and this one here is for your uh, profiles and things for your roads. So let's go and have a look at a component road, because it's been a a little change made to that, in that um, when you're having a look at your cross sections, uh, you can also bring up the profile, uh, show profile view, and we actually see that slider in the profile view as well, and we can move it around through there if we want, and it's showing you the different cross sections of course as we slide that around, and you should see that changing in a moment, there it goes. Okay. So just a little additional feature and also down in the profile view we've got a lot of the options we used to have in only on the uh, in the model view such as changing the geometry um, to symmetric parabolas and things like that, circular curves and these little grips on the end of the curves as well are editable down in here uh, which we lost for a little while. Uh, I think there's a couple of other features there as well. Um, if we go to here, pick the road, um, there's the ability to hold down a shift or a control key, yeah hold down the shift key and it, it holds the, uh, the grade in and I think it must be the control key holds the grade out, yes it does. So those are quite nice to have as well, similar to what you have in, in uh, Civil 3D. Uh, other things that we've got, um, let's get out of those ones, um, they've made some changes, oh when you do have a bridge, uh, the bridge export to Revit, there's some extra functionality being added in there, I'll let the Revit guys explain that to you, but it's to do with uh, being able to map families I believe. Um, but also the other big ticket item is um, working with the ESRI ArcGIS data connection through the web, through the ESRI web interface. We had that before and these pipes were actually written in that way um, from my little uh, ArcGIS 
um, export or import. Um, but now what you can do is draft your own features in here and add them to the Esri data source if you want. So I'm going to go to engineering view here and we'll just put in a create a pipe system. Now I've only been using this for about half an hour and I'm already getting used to where things are. Drainage connector, uh, let's do yeah, manholes and pipelines only. Run with that. Come from up the top of the hill, run down to here in the run. And what I might do is delete that manhole, grab that pipe. Now at the moment, it's a plain InfoWorks pipe. I'm going to snap it to that one, maybe get the elevations a bit better. Or you could type it in if you knew what it was. And the new feature is this. I can pick that. Now, where this data source came from, uh, let's go and have a look at that. Here is a, well it's actually just a shapefile read into the uh, Esri uh, online system. And that's the pipes we're looking at, and that's the one I just connected to the end of. Um, what we can do is pick that pipe we've created in here. Now this could be a pipe, could be a coverage area, could be anything that uh, can be read from the ArcGIS. Um, road center lines for instance. You can right click on it and change its feature class to instead of being an InfraWorks pipeline, it now is a service stormwater pipe which is what Esri is calling it and it's what has been read in over here. So with that changed um, you actually get all the properties we should have. Down the bottom here, the extended properties from Esri, from the Esri data source. So that being done, we can then and do that as with as many pipes and connectors as you want to, and then these we can now save back. So if I save it back to the Esri data source, switching back, refresh it. and we've now added it into that data source. Very easy. Um, if you want to actually update the properties of that, I think you probably need to refresh this, uh, and then you've got to adjust the properties actually in uh, InfoWorks as well, and, and add data to it. So, a real quick run through of the updates. Um, as I say, I'm getting very used to this user interface already. I've only been using it for a short period of time. Um, in fact, just this afternoon. So, I don't think, uh, once you've used, been using this uh, interface for a little while, it's uh, it's actually going to be too hard to, um, to get your head around. Alright, so that being said, um, thank you for listening to this video, and uh, we'll talk again shortly.